Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick, and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. This video is on how to make the handheld tucking fork, uh, how to make a tucking fork number two. If you haven't watched tucking fork number one, which was building the vice held tucking fork, I would suggest watching that one first and there will be a link under the description that will connect you to tucking fork number one. This video will be on how to make a handheld tucking fork uh, made out of the same Harbor Freight chipping hammers. So let's get on to making these. Here with the handheld version of the tucking forks, you will also need two Harbor Freight chipping hammers. The only other thing you will need to make the handheld tucking fork is a piece of half inch round solid bar stock about six inches long. And I have made a bunch of tucking forks out of the ends of these pry bars from Harbor Freight but they have very erratic lengths of the uh, taper so what I'm going to use is just six inches of the end portion of the pry bar to make these tucking forks. The first thing we're going to do is cut the two handles off You want to cut these off as closely as you can to the head so you don't have that much uh, cleanup to do. The next thing I'm going to do is go over on the belt sander and smooth these off, almost erase them so you can't see uh, any of these places where the handle was. And then I'm going to bead blast it up into hair uh, so I can mark it for the length that I want. Okay, now I've got both pieces uh, bead blasted and by hand I radiused off both of these ends. Uh, there's a sharp corner here and this tip is very sharp. I want this a nice radius so it doesn't dig into the material as you're bending it around. And since these are going to be handheld, they don't have to be near as long as the vice held pieces. So let's figure out how to uh, mark those for length. I have a piece here that I can butt both of these up against so I know that. Uh, the length, whatever it is, is going to be equal and then I'm going to put a piece of 14 gauge in between them and then I put this piece underneath so these are level and I'm going to look at this and I'm looking right at right at about four inches should be plenty for this for the length of these since we're going to be uh, bending or tucking only uh, thinner material and by hand you won't have the leverage of the uh, vice held fork uh, these can be much shorter so what I'm going to do is take a piece of four inch tubing and just like I did before in
tucking fork number one. Scribe a line there. And scribe a line there. And my soapstone is only sharpened to one edge, so it marks exactly to the top of this four inch piece. Now let's just take these two over to the lathe and part them off. Okay, now I've got both of these pieces parted off at the right length, that four inches. The next thing we're going to do is cut the old pry bar to six inches long. Now I'll take this over to the bead blaster, get rid of all the paint, and then we'll turn a nice radius on each end on the lathe. Now that we have all the paint removed, let's put a radius on both ends of the piece. Both ends radiused off nicely. It was just that easy. Okay, we've got both ends uh, radiused off real nice. Make a nice handle. Uh, for those of you without a lathe, if you look at uh, the first video, 
uh, making a tucking fork number one. You will see how I used the socket and the hand drill to put a radius on the ends of the tucking forks and you can use that same uh, process in putting a radius on the end of the handles. Now for putting the tack on the uh, tucking forks I have this piece here which is nothing more than a stop for the uh, tips of the forks. I'll put a little piece there just a weight that keeps these in alignment and to keep these at the same height I'll put a small piece in the back there make sure everything is nice and tight and I'm going to spray it with nozzle spray and then just give it a little tack right at the closest point right here and then I'm going to flip it over and put another tack first spray it this keeps all the little balls from sticking All right, there we have a nice tack, and we have 14 gauge in between the two forks. The next thing we'll do is figure out where the center of the handle will be. Okay, now to figure out where the handle is going to be centered, we can just take a piece, put that up against a block of steel so it ain't going to move around much and push the end of the handle up against that same block you can see here that the amount sticking out is four and three eighths so I'm just going to take my square and set it to two and three sixteenths I'm going to take this piece Set that up nice and tight against there. And I found that uh, the diameter of the tucking fork itself was 640 thousandths and the handle was 540 thousandths. That's a hundred, hundred thousandths difference. So I needed 50 thousandths per side and this is 50 thousandths aluminum. So I've got this up tight. I'm going to push that so it's parallel to both sides there. And I just take my square and slide that over until I hit the 2 and 3 sixteenths. I'll push that up against there so it won't roll. I'm going to spray it with the nozzle spray so I don't get spatter all over the place and then put a tack one right here and one right here now I'm going to turn it over spray this side of the handle and put another two tacks now we're ready to weld it complete now we have the piece completely welded uh, welded all the way around the handles and filled the center on both sides there are a few little dingle balls on there I don't like those and there's one little sharp point right here so I'm gonna massage all these out and make these this as comfortable as possible when holding it like this let me clean this up 
and I'll show it to you when I'm done. And here it is complete. Uh, after I got finished knocking all the little dingle balls off and knocking loose, chiseling off all of the tenacious deposits of silicone down in the cracks there with using uh, a chisel that I've got sharpened just to one side so I can actually just slide it along and by spraying the piece first with the anti-spatter those little balls come off after I got those knocked off <clears throat> I went over and sandblasted it and then I used a stainless steel wire brush to bring a sheen to it and then after that was done I used a brass wire brush and went over it and that just changes the color just a little bit so there's how you make a handheld tucking fork so there you have building a set of tucking forks out of some Harbor Freight chipping hammers. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel.